Hello, I'm Sam Biggins with OSS Integrators, and today I'll be presenting the application management demonstration within Splunk. In this demo, we'll look at how Splunk can leverage data in your IT environment to provide value and insight to both the IT operations group as well as to business users. On the left here, we see an example of a typical IT environment with uh, a number of components such as servers, databases, and network equipment, as well as tools that are commonly used to manage that environment, such as change management or ticketing tools, as well as things like virtual hypervisors. All of these systems are generating data constantly, and this data produces a record that captures things like user transactions, machine states, security threats, fraudulent activity, and other kinds of user behavior. The data exists as sources, such as the ones shown in the box here, and Splunk is able to capture this data using a variety of mechanisms, such as capturing the data directly from the file on the system or receiving it via syslog. It is also able to query the data via WMI or by making API calls. On the right here, we see a typical Splunk enterprise deployment. We have a number of Splunk instances which are capturing this data and sending it over to Splunk index and search servers, which are then also processing requests from the Splunk search heads. Here we have a landing page that gives users a high-level overview of the operational health of our environment. Along the top, we're able to represent what we consider to be some key metrics in the environment, such as SLA infractions, failed transactions, and what our current environment capacity is running at. And all of these are calculated as uh, simple searches that we're able to run and then represent as dashboard items, as you see here. For example, uh, the SLA infractions could be a representation of how many transactions are taking longer than an established SLA threshold or simply are not returning. Failed transactions could be something like a user trying to check out at our e-commerce site and being greeted, getting instead something like a, an HTTP 503 or some other error codes. And current capacity uh, is not necessarily just looking at the CPU or memory utilization of a system but could be a calculated throughput for that particular system as well as possibly uh, a group of systems supporting an entire application. Down here we see a visualization of our real-time transaction volume. This allows us to see in real time how many transactions are occur occurring across all tiers of our infrastructure and we're able to compare it to a seven-day average to give us an idea of how that volume is against uh, established performance metrics. And as we can see here we're running a little bit on the low side. Along the bottom here, we've gone ahead and added additional context to some of the indicators above. We can see our average transaction duration mapped out over time, as well as being overlaid against what our established SLA is. Here, we're visualizing the number of failed transactions versus the successful ones to give us a, a better idea of what our failure rate is overall. Now, as we can see, SLA violations are continuing to occur in our environment and so it's something we ought to dig into so we'll go a little further into our environment state. This is our environmental state dashboard which allows us to visualize the transaction times across all of our tiers from the web server to the application server to the database server. Up at the top here we're able to see the length of an individual transaction time is expected to take based on an average across all of these tiers. On the left here, we're able to see our current web server performance, which is right around 24 milliseconds or so. And we're able to see on a historical view here uh, that that's been rather consistent for all of the servers uh, over the last hour. We see the same is true for our application server. And then looking over here at the database server, we can tell very easily that the database is running hot and that uh, it has been for all of the servers across the last hour at least. Scrolling down the page uh, we've once again added additional context uh, to help us under better understand the state of our environment. For the web tier we've chosen to visualize HTTP status codes. This gives us an idea of how many of the different status codes are taking place and do they seem to uh, exceed what we would consider to be normal and so we're, we're seeing that the majority of our traffic is uh, okay and that only small amounts are uh, error traffic. 
Here, for the application tier, we've chosen to visualize the JVM heap size, and by looking at the memory usage of the Java Virtual Machine over time, uh, we're able to get a better idea of how these servers are running. For the database queue, we've, uh, excuse me, for the database, we've chosen to visualize the purchase queue size, and as you see here, we have a running average, and once again, uh, we've got a seven-day running average as well, and this is uh, really one of the powerful examples of how Splunk can help uh, with IT operations because by providing this sort of historical data we're able to see very quickly um, you know what current metrics are telling us versus expected environment performance which really aids in our troubleshooting and detection efforts so because we can see that there is a clear issue with the database uh, we're going to go ahead and drill into that tier Here we have our database state dashboard, which is giving us even more granular views into our database tier. We can see that we have the same queue size graph as from the previous page, and along the bottom we can see we have the CPU and memory utilization for all of our database servers. And as we can see here, they're actually uh, running pretty normal despite the fact that we know that there is something wrong with our database uh, layer. In the middle here, um, we're seeing one of the core value propositions of Splunk, which is the ability to index any kind of data. So in this case, we're not just using log data, but we're also pulling environment metrics. In this case, we're looking at change tickets and MySQL uh, configuration management events. And so what we're doing is we're correlating these two sources of data and we're combining them into a single result. So we can see here that we've had multiple changes in occur in our environment today. And in this top case, we can see that Simon changed the concurrent connection queue size from 40 to 4, and that there was no change ticket associated with this. Now we know that this kind of change could likely be the cause of why our database is running hot, because it's no longer to process as many concurrent transactions as it was. Another great feature of Splunk is that since none of the data is thrown away in the process of creating the visualizations, we're able to drill down to the raw data from any panel at a given time, which allows us to see the raw events that help generate the events. Here in the raw event view, we can see the search that generated the previous panel we were looking at. In this case, we're looking for anything with a source type of MySQL config or remedy change ticket, and we're running it through a macro called check for ticket. Uh, this macro uses one or more fields. In this case, we're using the ticket ID and user fields, and allows us to bind asynchronous events together using the transaction command, which then puts, uh, puts them together to look like a single transaction, as you can see here. Now, in the first event, we can see the time the change took place, we can see which machine it took place on, we can see what the change made was, what the previous value is, and what the new value is. And we can see that there was no ticket associated with this change. Geez, Simon, what are you doing to us here? Now, if we look at the second and third tickets, we can see that the changes have been made and that the ticket ID is allowing us to bind it as well to the remedy ticket, so we can also see that a change window was associated with it, and we can see those details here, and we can see this also in the third ticket. In this case, what we're looking for is any changes that don't have a ticket, and so we're going to come over to the interesting fields here to change ticket, and we're going to click, and we're going to look for anything that has the value of no change ticket. Now, what we want to do here is try to get proactive and try to prevent this from happening in the future. So what we'll do is we'll tell Splunk to look for this condition on a real-time basis across a 30-second window. And then we'll come in here to create and we'll go ahead and create an alert. And we'll call this uh, change with no ticket and we'll tell it to trigger in real-time whenever a result matches and when that happens we want it to show a triggered alert in our alert manager and we're going to go ahead and set that as a sev high because as we've seen um, unticketed changes can be extremely disruptive to our environment and then we're going to go ahead and save it now anytime uh, a change is made in our environment with no ticket we're going to get an alert on this 
um, and be able to address it right away. And this is one of the, the great things with Splunk is that as you encounter things like this in your environment that are odd, um, that you know you can track them either by creating an alarm or you've seen we've made extensive use of panels to provide additional information to the environment. Um, and this can really help your IT operations group to more effectively do their jobs. Also, having access to the raw data for all the events makes it very easy to quickly gather information related to an event, uh, which helps speed up the triage process as well. Last, we'll look at the CEO dashboard, which is an example of a dashboard that could sit on an executive's desktop and help provide a clear view of what's going on in the business. Along the top here, we see real-time site statistics for real-time transaction volume, shopping cart value, and visitor count. Looking at the shopping cart value, Splunk is able to correlate the product IDs it sees in the web logs to a price lookup table. We're then able to use Splunk statistical operators to calculate the average value across all customer shopping baskets, which gives us the value we see here. On the right, we have another example of product ID lookup. In this case, we're converting the product ID to an easily recognizable name that allows non-technical users to see at a glance what the sales volumes are for different items. On the left, we're taking information like customer source IP or other location information and visualizing their location on a map. Along the bottom here, we see some marketing panels such as abandoned baskets, percentage of coupon usage, and top promotions, which is giving us uh, the ability to perform comprehensive web analytics using Splunk and the data that it's able to index. I hope this demo has helped and provides you a new idea of the level of insight and value that Splunk can bring to your IT operations and to your business. Thanks for joining.